That number one, the emotional intelligence starts with understanding yourself. So that self-awareness piece, because if I can understand some of the things that causes me challenges in life, um, some of the things that probably, you know, gets under my skin a little bit, if I can understand what that is, I can then put words to it. Yeah. And then if I can put words to it, I can then explain it to you or, you know, first explain it to myself, then explain it to you and other people so that you can try to understand. Mm -hmm. And then once I understand myself and some of these different things that cause me different challenges in life I can then work on improving my own self-control with it mm. right so but it, it all starts with you understanding yourself and how I like to say how your own system works and how your own system how you can navigate your own system and that's really trying to put words to it so you can communicate and show up differently or show up in a better way uh, more emotionally intelligent to other people Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. It is Speaking With Gravity. I am Joshua. Hello, everyone. My name is Hannah. And what up? I'm Terrence. And we are your hosts of Speaking With Gravity. Uh, we're still in season nine. We're, what, mm -hmm. five episodes in? I think this is our fifth episode. I believe. Uh, I believe. Fourth right. or fifth episode. We're we, we, we getting there. We're getting there. Uh, so 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 great pace been been really interesting so far and I think we got another really interesting one uh, again for you today but I think that uh, what the people want to know from from you Terrence I think that that kind of actually leads us into what we're gonna be talking about today so we'll we'll let you start us off man please yes 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 back with another what the people the people want, want to know I you know I gotta give the people what they want you know they, they want it from and you. they want to know. Do women really want emotionally intelligent men? Mm, good question. What, what, what we think? Let's ask one. <laughs> I um, want an emotionally intelligent man. However, I do recognize that um, sometimes I do recognize that I have to grow as a woman um, to mm. meet the expectations and the needs and the wants of a man that is truly emotionally intelligent. However, I have not ran across or um, been introduced to a lot of men that are emotionally intelligent. It is a it is a rarity to me. It's the, very uncommon. The ones that are. Have you have you been introduced to ones that are? Yes. What's your experience been like with them? Um, challenging simply because an emotionally intelligent man is going to um, is going to motivate you and. Um, He's going to motivate you to become a better woman emotionally. And as a woman myself and as women species, we are already naturally emotional. And sometimes that doesn't look healthy. Sometimes that is unmanageable, you know. Um, so already being an emotional species, having a structure man come into my life and say hey like these are areas you need to improve on emotionally to be with me. That can be challenging. Um However, I think it should be a two-way street. You know, yeah. I can recognize some some areas that they need to, that he needs to improve on as well, and we can have those discussions. But it is challenging um, because it, it encourages you um, and somewhat forces you to look at your weaknesses and become better. I definitely think it's a two-way street. Um, to, but to answer the question, I think you know women do want uh, emotionally intelligent men. But question is, are they ready? For an emotional mm. intelligent mm. man, because um, like you said, this the emotional intelligent man is going to let you know how he feels, whether you like it or not, right? And that's not I'm saying like he's trying to bash you for anything. He's trying to communicate what's going on with mm. him emotionally, right? So he's going to let you know these things, and you have to be ready to receive that and not feel like it's an attack on you. Right. No, it's just me as communicating with you what I, about my emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I've had experiences where, uh, you know, women have said that they want that and I give that to them. But then again, like I said on a previous episode, it, it's overwhelming. They, they, they take it like it's a attack on them, attack on like saying, you know, they're, they're always the problem. It's like, no, I don't need you to do anything about what I'm saying, but I just, I do need you to hear me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think s women want it. But they have to be ready for it yeah. at the same time and knows what comes with it. And in general, um, we have lived in a, in, a, in a society for so long. Men have had to suppress their emotions and they have had to suppress how they feel and um, not have the, um, the safe space to express 
how they feel internally. So with this transition to men, um, I'm not saying that men have not formally been emotionally intelligent, but what I'm saying is now it's more normalized for a man to express their emotions. Um, I feel like that transition is needed and it's challenging as a woman. It is challenging. With it becoming uh, more prevalent or, you know, more normal for men to express uh, their feelings or to, uh, to express some emotional capacity, um, With that, when men, when, when we're seeing men that aren't quite there, mm-hmm. where you know where women might want them to be, um, how can women address that in a healthy way to help that man out? Can you um, ask your question one more time? For yeah. Me? So um, you mentioned that you know that's becoming more normal uh-huh. um, in men that emotional intelligence showing you know capacity for emotional intelligence. So if you have a man that's not quite there yet mm-hmm. um what can a woman do to uh help him get there but in a healthy way right mm-hmm. without saying hey i need you to be this like mm-hmm. hey you falling short on this right. why you don't think you know what's a healthy way to help him get there I can think of a, a couple of ways a woman can help. Um, the first way I can think of is by being a role model. If you are a healthy, um, if you're in a healthy set of mind and if you are a healthy, emotionally mature woman, then you can model that through your actions and how you respond to situations mm-hmm. and how you communicate that, hey, this is what um, emotional <laughs> intelligence looks like, looks like, so I'm going to model that. Um, another way that a woman create can what a woman can do is create a safe space for a man to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if he's not able to be vulnerable um, in his workplace, he's not able to be vulner- vulnerable around his guys and friends. If he's not able to be vulnerable at the gym and different, you know, spaces that he goes into, where is he able to be? You know, where is the safe space for him to be um, emotionally um, expressive? And then... The other the other method that I can think of is by being direct and acknowledging how the man is not being emotionally mature. Um, but with that, you have to be very sensitive and empathetic mm-hmm. in how you convey that message because what you don't want is for someone, man or female, you don't want them to take defense and say, um, you know, well, well. I don't, I don't operate and I don't express my emotions because I, I was never taught. Um, you know, you don't want them to automatically take defense to what you're saying simply by identifying ways that they can improve on their emotional intelligence. Uh, I think also another thing is, you know, acknowledge what they're doing right. Because mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that, you know, I think comes up with a lot of men is sometimes they feel like, oh, I just ne- I can't do anything right. You know, I'm always mm-hmm. wrong. And they get down on themselves because they... Um, so acknowledging, I see that you're doing this, and I appreciate that, right? Mm-hmm. We men will appreciate hearing that a lot more because it's mm-hmm. always feel like there's a lot that's on them. A lot of pressure. Times, a lot of pressure that's on them, and they're trying to, you know, always meet that pressure. But at least someone sees that they're trying and acknowledging mm-hmm. what they're mm-hmm. doing can help create that safe space. Yeah. Beautiful. I think uh, this kind of leads us into the cutie of the hour. You want to? Let's do it. it. So the cutie of the hour is a quotable um, data or another version of a fun fact that you can share with um, individuals you know. So today's quote says, did you know that research suggests that emotional intelligence can be a stronger predictor of success than IQ? I'll read that one more time. Did you know that research suggests that emotional intelligence can be a stronger predictor of success versus IQ. Studies have shown that individuals with high emotional intelligence tend to have better social skills, make more informed decisions, and experience greater overall being. Millionaire, millionaires have high emotional intelligence. And this comes from um, one of the sources that we'll list. You know, it made me think about that quote, uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. If you're good socially, if you can get around socially, um, if you got high emotional intelligence, sometimes that's the predicting factor. That's mm-hmm. to me that quote speaks directly to um, to what you just read. I agree, and I just want to spend some time um, discussing the difference between IQ and EQ. So um, IQ is what we know to have the ability to think. Um, what is your IQ score? Being able to get through school, not um, being able to have either a high IQ level. And this cannot be earned. 
However, EQ, which is emotional intelligence, is the ability to feel versus the ability to think. Emotional intelligence gets you through life. Your um, this can emotional intelligence can also be learned. And let's see. IQ, which is um, relating to logical reasoning, cognitive functioning, your memory, how you're able to comprehend things, your math skills, um, your spatial thinking, and this can be influenced by your genetics. And on the opposite side, your emotional intelligence, this is identifying, perceiving, and regulating your emotions through a couple of different domains. So we talk about self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, and social skills, like you were saying, Joshua. Um, and there's no standard, standard, standardized test that says, okay, this is how emotionally intelligent you are compared to IQ. You can take a test and receive a score and say, okay, my IQ level is, you know, high or it's um, medium. There is no standardized test for emotional intelligence. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know. So today, and so that's what we're talking about today, right? What is emotional intelligence? Mm -hmm. I think you really broke it down in a way where we can like uh, uh, see the contrast in it to, mm -hmm. between emotional and intellectual. Um, so we're talking about what is emotional intelligence and why it's important in our personal and our professional lives. Um, and earlier we, we, we talked a little bit about personal. To me, we, we definitely get personal. We're talking about relationships. Um, first of all, to me, um, when we talk about emotional intelligence, uh, my thoughts are that it's, it's intelligence that allows you to uh, kind of navigate emotional terrains. Uh, such as relationships, attitudes of self and others, difficult decisions, mistakes, problem solving, conflict resolution, mm -hmm. all those type of things, right? But being able to navigate those from, um, you know, your, your uh, what, what you know isn't always going to get you there, right? right. Um, but being able to navigate those is so important. Um, so, like I say, mm -hmm. you you brought up those contrasts to uh, to that intellectual knowledge, and you know. Um, I'll tell you what, somebody who got both is really dangerous. Very dangerous. <laughs> um, and I, in my opinion, I am striving to gain a great sense or um, a great interpretation of both my IQ as well as my EQ, my emotional intelligence. And this reminds me of, like, we talk about people that are book smart versus, like, street smart. Well, this is a similar analogy. You know, we have people that are um, book smart when it comes to taking tests and math, um, science, you know, that logical mm -hmm. side of things. But then the opposite of log logic is emotional. And like you said, a person that has both logic and emotional um, intelligence is very dangerous. But how can we earn that emotional intelligence? It's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, and I'll speak personally, like what emotional intelligence means to me is how we're able to, and I'm gonna use the word you use, navigate certain spaces. How are we able to interact with people? Mm -hmm. How are we, and let, let me go back. How, how do we interact with ourselves? Mm -hmm. How are we self-aware? Mm -hmm. um, how do we know our own you know, traumas and our own situations, our own triggers? How are we self-aware? It always starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. And then emotional intelligence to me is how we interact with the people around us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody that is strictly book smart may not be able to interact on on a very social level because their IQ is so high, mm -hmm. you know, so they're thinking so logically about things. Um, oh, this person is looking at me like sideways. The whole time that person just wants to come and talk to you. So there has to be some type of balance between your IQ and your EQ. And when it comes to emotional intelligence, it's so important to just be in tune with who you are as a person. And sometimes that means means face, facing hard truths about yourself. Yep. And a lot of times, like, when I'm, um, you know, speaking with clients and stuff, I, I ask them a question. And before they can even think about the question, the first thing that comes out of their mouth, I don't know. You ain't even put no thought into it. So I think that goes... Back to what you said, number one, the emotional intelligence starts with understanding yourself, so that self-awareness piece, because if I can understand some of the things that causes me challenges in life, um, some of the things that probably, you know, gets under my skin a little bit, if I can understand what that is, I can then put words to it. Yeah. And then if I can put words to it, I can then explain it to you or, you know, first explain it to myself, then explain it to you and other people so that you can try to understand. Mm -hmm. And then once I understand myself and some of these different things that cause me different challenges in life, 
I can then work on improving my own self control with it, mm. right? So, but it, it all starts with you understanding yourself and how I like to say how your own system works and how your own system, how you can navigate your own system, and that's really trying to put words to it so you can communicate and show up differently or show up in a better way, uh, more emotionally intelligent to other people. So, one thing you brought up, Hannah, earlier was uh, self awareness. We mm-hmm. were talking about emotional intelligence. Uh, another one, uh, another one that you brought up was self regulation. Um, can y'all, I guess, kind of break that down for me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and self regulation. I, I have an idea, you know, of of what that concept kind of speaks to. Uh, but, which uh, one? Uh, regulation or awareness? So, self regulation. Self regulation. All right. When you think about. Uh, uh, that's some regulators came to my mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, when you think about regulate something, it means to, in a way, level out, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if, if it becomes, you know, unbalanced, a regulator will bring it back to balance. Yeah. So pretty much pretty, uh, self-regulation is how can you bring yourself back to balance? Mm-hmm. So, okay, somebody makes me upset. Whew, I get angry. So I'm, I'm out of balance. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to do? And that kind of goes back to the episode we talked about building that you know, your own coping kit. What, how can I cope mm-hmm. in order to bring myself, regulate myself back to balance? Um, and that's very important. But in order to bring yourself back to balance, I think very is very important to understand what triggered or what caused the unbalance before it caused you to become unbalanced in the first place. Mm-hmm. So that's where the self regulation piece come in for you in order for you to learn how to self regulate to come back. Just kind of like self-managing, mm-hmm. kind of. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I heard you also mention, um, and I think what comes with self-regulation is how you're able to control your emotions, not just in public, um, you know, when people are watching, but how are you able to control your emotions when you're in the room by yourself and things really hit deep? That's it, you right know, Are now. you going to punch a wall? Or are you going to say... I feel mad right now. Um, That is regulation. Um, And it all comes back to being healthy versus unhealthy. And I also heard you mention self-awareness. I was spending some time on my phone looking for, um, in therapy, we often use uh, emotion and emotions will. And what I was spending time looking at the name of this specific emotions will, um, but I couldn't find it. However, it is simply um, various emotions And it all starts with core emotions, such as happiness, joy, um, anger, sadness. And then from those core emotions, the developer, he expanded to show you um, more emotions that are categorized under happiness, Mm -hmm. more emotions that can describe the feeling of sadness. For example, under the category of I feel sad, you can also feel despair. You can feel betrayed. You can feel depressed. So um, I feel like a large part of self-awareness is being able to articulate what emotion you're feeling in that exact moment so you can understand how to deal with it. Yep. Y'all, y'all have both been speaking on that, um, being able to talk about it, articulate that communication piece. Ooh-wee. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's emotional Ooh-wee. intelligence. Ooh-wee. Um, talk about how you're feeling and how you feel about something mm-hmm. else. Yeah. And able to receive how someone else is feeling. Able to you receive, know? yeah. Uh-huh. That's a part of communication too, mm-hmm. right? Being yeah. able to receive, yeah. It's a two-way street. Because a lot of people can't receive it very well. Mm-hmm. They Because we as people, we internalize a lot. So if I was to come to you and say, I'm feeling this way due to maybe something you've said or something that you've done, if you don't have a high level of emotional intelligence, the only thing that you heard was, I was a problem <laughs> to what to why you're upset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what you heard because you mm. internalize everything or most of what I said. So you consider yourself to be the problem. That's not what I said. Right. I'm, I'm just communicating how I'm feeling. Again, I don't need you to do anything about it and and what how we can we move forward. So I'm trying to work with you. I'm not trying to blame you at anything. Mm-hmm. And when you have two people that has, you know, maybe a high level of emotional intelligence, you can work together and you can understand that other person is not attacking you. They're just expressing themselves to try to work mm-hmm. with you. So it's a collaboration. Uh, we have two emotionally intelligent people uh, in order to help with, um, you know, like you said, self-regulation, self-control, things like that. And shout out to one of our producers, the um, one and only Curvin. He 
um, brought up the picture of the feelings chart. So if you want to Google feelings will um, created by Dr. Gloria Wilcox, W-I-L-C-O-X. Um, hopefully it comes up in Google. But some of the core values are um, surprise, happiness, sad, disgusted, angry, fearful, and bad. So those are just um, a couple of the core um, emotions that we experience. And as a child, you may ask a child, how do you feel right now? And they say may say something very basic. I feel happy. I feel sad. I feel <laughs> mad or angry. However, as we become more emotionally mature, we're able to, um, to categorize those feelings more in depth and more specific. Oh, not only do I feel happy, but I feel accepted. I feel powerful. I feel valued. I feel courageous. So those are just some examples of um, being able to be self-aware of what emotion you're feeling in that moment. And listen, God blesses us with different gifts, right? Some people are really smart. Some, you know, high mm-hmm. on the IQ end. Some people are high on the EQ end, right? right? Some mm-hmm. naturally. And then some people aren't. So some people have to work mm-hmm. work on these things. Even if you are high on that chart, you need to be working. Because if you what you don't use, you'll lose, right? right. Uh, what you don't use, you'll lose. Remind me of a story uh, about, the, about the man who... And uh, I think uh, it was three men. Um, they was given different talents. One was given five. One was given three. One was given one. Something like that. And uh, you had one. You had two of them. They multiplied their talents. They brought mm-hmm. more back to the uh, to to the uh, guy who gave them the talents. Then you had one. He just put his up. He didn't do nothing mm-hmm. with it. You gotta be doing something with this stuff. You gotta be gaining more. No matter how much you have, don't get discouraged if you're not. You know, um, not on the high end, right? Of having emotional intelligence, you can always, you can always grow. Mm -hmm. There's always room for growth. You can always uh, put these things into practice, right? The things that we're saying, putting them into practice, and uh, then challenge yourself, right? Look Mm -hmm. at yourself, self awareness. Where am I right now, and where do I want to be? Hannah talks a lot about goals. She talks about goals a lot, and I love it uh, because when you set a goal, you kind of you can set a measurable, a, yeah, measurable mm-hmm. goals. Then, then you you give yourself something to get to, right? You you are able to motivate. You give yourself a motivation to to, to grow more. So um, so yeah, the, definitely don't get discouraged about about uh, where you are. But if you are uh, on the high end, don't think that there's no room for you to grow. We all need to be practicing mm-hmm. these things, putting these things into practice. Um, so, so that we're prepared when situations, uh, when situations come up in which these things could, could be yeah. used in our favor. And that reminds me of another um, component of emotional intelligence, which is motivation. You yes. know, if you're a person that <laughs> is so stuck in um, feeling groupy um, and feeling down and you don't have optim, you're not an optimistic person to recognize that there is hope in the situation you know just because you're going through a bad situation or a challenge right now um if you're just so fixated on the bad and you don't have the emotional intelligence to look at okay you know there's some good in the situation that motivation lacks so much and over a period of time or over a lifetime it can be very detrimental if you don't tap into that emotional intelligence and that motivation to want more to strive for more to reach those goals like you were mentioning Mm-hmm. Well, how, uh, how does someone increase their emotional intelligence? How how how, do, how does that work? What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one way, uh, one thing that you can do, and you might not even be looking at it as increasing my emotional intelligence, but one thing that you can do is uh, and it helps with communication. Is listen twice, talk once. Mm-hmm. I think you got two ears and one mouth, so that's definitely one. <laughs> um, listening and not being so ready to respond. Uh, not listening to respond, but actively listening. That helps you with effective communication. That's gonna mm-hmm. that's gonna elevate your conversation. So that's that's uh, one of the ones I would say. Um, scoping out situations and details before you just jump in to stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's important. Uh, people so often just getting stuff down on the context or nothing like that. That's definitely not being emotionally intelligent, right? Um, you don't even know what you're talking about. Um, so not just hopping in stuff like that um, and taking ownership, I yeah. think, in situations. Okay, that's a big one. Ownership. So, 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 of course, you the person could have been, it could have been a situation, something went wrong. Somebody else could have been 90%. What they did could have led to 90% of the problem, but you still had 10% in there, okay? Mm-hmm. Owning up to your part of it. Even if the other person not willing to, you being in, taking the initiative and owning up to my 10%. Well, you know, I was wrong in this way. Right, and hopefully they'll 
uh, they'll own up to their part too. But if not, you're practicing your own uh, right. emotional intelligence on your journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. And what also goes along with active listening, um, that's exactly what you describe, describe. And us therapists call it active listening. So not just listening to respond, but listening to comprehend and understand that versus person's viewpoint, whether you believe they're right or wrong. Um, and in a lot of situations, if you have this mentality, okay, this person can either be right or wrong, we're already putting mm-hmm. ourselves inside a box versus expanding that emotional intelligence and recognizing we neither one of us may be right. Or we both may be right, um, but how do we discuss and talk about this so that we can have a median? Um, another tool to developing emotional intelligence is asking questions and, you know, listening to constructive criticism. If other people, if, if there's a pattern of people saying, oh, you lash out when, when you get mad, there you, go. you know, and your parents told you, oh, yeah, Billy always lash out. He always punches a wall every time he gets mad. We just patch them up. And then you, <laughs> you, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you enter, you know, a uh, College and your roommate say, "Oh yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to make him mad because he's going to lash out and punch a wall." Then you enter romantic oh, relationships Billy. and you still hear Come your on, romantic Billy. partner saying, "Oh, I'm afraid to make you mad because I know that you're going to lash out." Are you listening? You know, to that Billy constructive. He's not listening. strong. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening um, strong. to that constructive criticism and more so inquiring about um, those patterns that other people see in you? Mm-hmm. You know, emotional intelligence comes with the good and the bad yep. you yeah. know we can we can be healthy and identify you know these emotions we're feeling but are we able to comprehend when other people are telling us okay you got some patterns and some actions about you that you know are related to your emotion to your emotions that you may need to improve on getting defensive yeah right that's mm-hmm. that's one main thing that i was definitely going to say mm. is one thing that to help you understand if uh, in order to increase your emotional intelligence, is to learn pat you learn your own patterns, mm-hmm. whether those are good patterns or ne- uh, uh, patterns that are not so good that you can improve on. You know, the good patterns, of course, you want to do more of them. The patterns that, such as Billy hitting his wall, you might want to chill out with that. Billy. <laughs> you know, so it, it's, the, it's watching patterns, and I tell my mm-hmm. clients that all the time. I'm trying to ask you questions, and I want you to maybe even record some of these different mm-hmm. things that you've. Uh, notice or things that's causing you problems throughout the day so we can figure out patterns. Mm-hmm. If we can figure out a pattern, we can figure out how to break the pattern. So I think that's very, one of the things that you can do to increase your emotional intelligence is to keep track of different uh, things that's worrying you, makes you anxious, mm-hmm. makes you sad, depressed. So now that you can figure out a pattern and so you can work on those patterns. I think um, other components that adds to understanding and developing your emotional intelligence is how well you adapt to change. Mm-hmm. What I've recognized is that individuals that have high emotional intelligence, they're able to um, recognize change, recognize mm-hmm. that, you know, you know, this, this is abnormal or this is very different from my routine or um, how I normally conduct things and how am I going to move forward? They have that motivation, um, that empathy, you know, in certain situations and even the social skills to understand, okay, who do I need to talk to what resources do I need to reach out to um, so that I'm okay or so that me and my family are okay so the ability to adapt to change something else that I've recognized is um it just it just lost my mind, so I'm gonna have to come back to it. <laughs> it happened to me like, last episode, I believe. So ain't, I, ain't nothing wrong with do that. Don't be messing y'all up when I be like, "That's a good one." Or I be like, "No, I don't think that's it." So it's just so much going on. Like kind of like kind of when you be in church, Amen. Amen. I got to hang it, man. I didn't miss it. Okay, I remember what it was. There you go. So um, another component or something that I've recognized that is so important to emotional intelligence is the ability to apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Yes. It's something so basic, you know. It's something that can be so basic, but also so difficult at the same time. And, you know, there's different levels to apologies. Some apologies are simple and some are very complex. You know, if, if you really messed up, then that deserves a complex, um, a more a more in-depth apology. And then, um, so, yeah, your ability to apologize definitely determines your um, level of emotional intelligence. People that have low emotional intelligence, they're not quick to apologize. They may not even recognize that they're wrong. 
wrong in the situation. Nope. Mm-hmm. Low emotional intelligence. Yep. Mm. On the opposite end, somebody that has high emotional intelligence, they're going to recognize what they did wrong in the situation. They're going to recognize how it impacted other people's emotions. And then they're going to take action to apologize and more so actions to change their behavior. And they I want to recognize. Mm-hmm. They you want speak on to. It. Some people don't even want to. Right, I don't right. want to know what Low I did Low emotional wrong. intelligence. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with that responsibility I wish I had of, of addressing that. Because when huh? she just clicked that face, she said, click. She did it a couple times. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Low hey, make emotional a beat for us. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, uh, another one I think, man, we got a lot of good ones, aren't we? Yep. Um, y'all got a lot of good ones. I say this. So the name of this episode is, or well, the topic for it is understanding your why. I think taking time to ask why. I think is a good one. That's been oh, a yeah, good that's one for me. One. Right, right, right. So why am I doing this? Why is this person doing this? Not judging. That's another one, mm-hmm. judging. But why is this person doing this? Um, why is this the way that it is? Taking right. time um, to really ask why mm-hmm. is another one. Mm. That's very important. And what I heard from that is, what I've recognized is that who teaches you emotional intelligence? Oftentimes, mm. you know, you develop it as a child. If you have emotionally mature parents, then they're going to teach you how to adapt to change, how to um, acknowledge your emotions, how to not suppress your emotions and express those emotions in a healthy way. But on the opposite side, if you don't have parents that have taught you emotional intelligence, you're responsible for learning it, mm. you know, on your own. Mm-hmm. And yes. one tip to do that is to go to therapy. You know, therapy, we're here to advocate for therapy. It's a resource to learn that emotional intelligence. And I have a resource if um, individuals that did not grow up with emotionally mature parents or did not understand what um, the value of emotional intelligence is, there's a book called Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, How to Heal from Distant, Rejecting, or Self-Involved Parents. And it's by Lindsay C. Gibson. Mm. It's a very common book in our field of therapy. Um... And it is also on Amazon. So that's just another resource for you all. Beautiful. What's the name of the book? One more time. Yep. Let me go back to it. Oh, I'm sorry. Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. How to Deal with Distant, Rejecting, or Self-Involved Parents. And what I've recognized is that individuals that may have grew up in maybe a toxic environment or mm-hmm. maybe an emotionally immature environment, mm-hmm. um, they can grow up to become what their parents were Mm -hmm. without changing. It takes that black sheet to change. um, And that's very difficult. That's very difficult. But the the last thing you want to do is continue those generational cycles of constantly being distant, (laughs) constantly being, uh, you know, rejecting, constantly being super critical that um, that emotional intelligence just, just stays low Generations to generations to generations. You gotta break the cycle. You gotta break the cycle. Yes, sir. Break the cycle. Break them chains. I'm all about this intergenerational trauma stuff, y'all. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a cycle that persists. If if it's not, if it does not take that one person to change it, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. it does take that one person to change it. So, if that one person do not change it, then these cycles are going to continue to persist throughout the generations. And uh, it's not easy to do by any means, but it's definitely worth it by doing it. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else that y'all would add to it? Add to this beautiful conversation? Um, I know when uh, Hannah, early on in the conversation, you mentioned like five fundamentals, I feel Mm -hmm. like. I feel like you hit all of them. Um, I think one that we didn't, and we could just hit it real quick, one that we didn't say too much about um, is empathy. Mm. Is empathy. Can one of y'all speak to empathy? Yeah. Really? Um, empathy is just, for to me, you know, be, uh, being empathetic towards someone, is just showing, showing them that you understand, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like people, they want to feel seen, they want to feel um, heard, they want to feel understood. Right. If people feel seen, heard, and understood, that's where how you create that safe place for them, and that's how you start to have them show them what the emotional intelligence looks like, so y'all both can be in that same space. Mm-hmm. So that that's how I would touch on that and feel like it, it relates. I yeah. agree. Yeah, um, being an empathetic person to me means able to just listen and 
create a safe space, like you said, Terrence, creating a safe space for somebody else to be emotional, whether that's healthy or unhealthy, um, allowing that safe space for them to be, to show their emotions and for it to be, um, you know, a structure in a safe space. But more importantly, how do we grow? You know, um, if I'm if I'm sitting down with a person that's very emotional and, you know, I'm being empathetic and understanding why they're, you know, super stressed out or super depressed or, you know, super mad right now, um, how do I create some type of stability to say, okay, thank you for expressing this to me, but what do we do from here? Mm. You know, un- understanding that person's perspective and also offer offering some support and alternatives and treatment options. Um, so, yeah. Nice, yeah. Just accepting and, and embracing that space is very important. I love it. I love it. How y'all feeling? I feel good. Yeah. Okay. I feel good. Beautiful, beautiful. And I just want to recognize that emotional intelligence can impact so many different areas of life. You know, mm-hmm. family, um, your workplace, um, your friendships. The more we develop our emotional intelligence, um, the more obviously emotional, intelligent we will be, but the better we interact with other people. Mm -hmm. And as a result, what I've seen in my personal experience, the better I interact with people, I get my desirable outcomes every time. You know, Mm -hmm. if I recognize that I'm going into a situation, um, I already know how to maneuver and how to navigate that situation, like you were saying, in an emotional, intelligent way to get my desired outcome from it. That's become one of my favorite words. You know that? It's navigate. navigate. I, I, <laughs> I love that word. I love the word. Um, I got one for you. Emotional intelligence builds bridges between people in your family, in your work, in your life. Mm-hmm. You may have to be the one to do it. And if you're emotionally intelligent, you should do it. That's mm-hmm. right. You should do it. It takes one person. It takes, it takes one, one person. Yeah. And I'm a testament to this. It takes one person to step outside the box and say, let me figure out what this emotional thing Come is on. going on. Yeah. Because I used to be a very emotional person without mm-hmm. no regulation, you know. Mm-hmm. So... I had to step outside and recognize, okay, how can I build my emotional intelligence? And as a result, it has impacted, um, positively impacted my community and the people around me. Yeah. So it just takes one. Just one. Be, be that person in your relationship. Be that person on your job. Be that person in your community. Mm-hmm. Be that person in your family. And you'll build bridges, mm-hmm. right? You'll make for a better a better community, a better relationship, right. a better just all around uh, situation for yourself and for others. Love it. I love it. I love it, y'all. Great episode. Great episode. Um, Hannah, you've been rocking it out. I That's what I was, I was I thinking at the minute. You was thinking like, that too. She just been Hannah, going. Hannah, you've been, you been rocking it out this, this, this <laughs> season, man. Hot. Listen, we're going to put your face on the... Um, no, you got to be on... No. I, I might, I might be mostly intelligent, but I'm also still an introvert. So. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to honor that. We're going to honor that. I, def- I definitely appreciate the acknowledgement, but I think we've been man, doing yeah. a great job as a team, and I just appreciate you all as well. No, nah, thank you. Like yeah. I said, well, you've been on fire, so I'll just let you go. And <laughs> shout out to our behind-the-scenes technicians, Come Winston, the guy behind the camera. Shout yes. out to him. Come on now. Yes, sir. I mean, well, yes, ma'am. Y'all see what I deal with. So, uh, so thank y'all for joining us. It's been another uh, enlightening episode, enlightening journey into the world of emotional intelligence. Yes. Uh, we hope that you've gained some valuable insights and some practical tips to enhance your own emotional intelligence skills. Remember, understanding and managing emotions is a lifelong journey mm-hmm. that can lead to more meaningful connections, building those bridges we talked about. Improve communication, a happier and more fulfilling life. Don't we all want that? Right. That's right. We all want that. Better quality of life. Most definitely. Most definitely. So stay tuned for episode six as well as the uh, the following episodes for uh, for this season. Season number season nine. Season nine. And listen, until next time, take care and y'all stay emotionally intelligent. Stay Speaking blessed. with gravity. Peace. Woo. Yay. Good job, y'all.